expensive. Scandinavia can be in general. So Scandinavia. <laughs> Fifteen times over. Let's do it. Hello everybody and welcome to the February vlog. What better way to start this video than do some unboxing stuff? One of the companies that I work for, I'm currently contracted to, decided not to give their employees a bonus this Christmas and they did instead give us gift cards. So I used the gift cards and got some stuff. So let's talk about it. Let's see, I got two things. Number one, she can have fancy coffees now, hello? Who am I? I got a milk frother. I'm about to have cold brew with cold foam. I'm about to have hot brew with hot foam. I'm about to have all of the foam, all of the froth, cappuccinos, lattes. I'm foaming it. No longer am I gonna use a saucepan to heat up my milk if I want a hot drink with milk in it. Wow, isn't she beautiful? Science. So this was the cheapest one <laughs> because if your girl likes something in 2024, it's having savings in your bank account. Not the most satisfying click, but I'll live with it. I was hoping this whole thing just like, you know. But the second thing is also very cool. So, oh. Baby. Ah, is this a platform situation? I'm about to be so tall. Other shoe matches my new shoes. I will try them on later. Obviously, I'm gonna band-aid the absolute hell out of my ankles because I don't wanna be shredded. A successful gift card use. Actually, I'm gonna try one of these on, on my bare foot. I'm not gonna show you said foot because I grew up on the internet. I know how people are. While I've been doing the laces, I'll tell you this funny story about the time that I went to Sweden to visit one of my work friends who graciously invited us to stay with her for a week. And we were visiting the museum with the big ship in it. And it was like a beautiful autumn. We went outside. Had a little bit of a coffee and then a man approached us and said hey can you take your socks off i'd love to take photos of you guys i'm from the da, 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 tourist board and i'm taking photos of young people around touristy areas but you need to have your socks off so that your feet are out because that looks a lot more fun than having your shoes on and the two friends that i was with were like oh my god of course say no more i'll take my shoes off immediately and i was like this sounds weird. So listen, Linda, Annalie, if your feet are on the internet, on some sketchy ass websites, just know that I suspected it. <laughs> oh, I'm about to get a cramp. They are chunky boys. I'm gonna go look in the mirror and come back, okay? The verdict is that I love them, okay? So I'll see you in the next segment, whatever that is. Bye. <laughs>
That's beautiful. Should I throw yours on full one and see what happens? Sure. It's just the, uh... Hello, everybody. Welcome to next week. The week following the week that you just saw. That's how days work. It's currently February the 10th. It's a Saturday. And I'm electing to work today. If I can help it. I try not to work on weekends because two days off is what keeps me sane and calm and collected. But today I've chosen to do a little bit of extra stuff because February is a big deadline month for me. I have two deadlines for sketches and one deadline for final art, which I think translates to one deadline a week for the rest of the month. And so in order to make next week a little bit easier for myself, I'm going to do a little bit of chipping away today and tomorrow. It's the type of thing that you just have to be open to as a freelancer and that's fine i'm doing easy stuff today i need to clean up some sketches that are going off to an art director on tuesday and i've chosen to go for this weekend because next weekend we're doing something really exciting and going by the seaside with some friends I am, of course, going to take you with me, so you have that to be excited about. However, just because we're working today does not mean that we're not also doing very exciting things. I do want to watch Saltburn tonight. I have been staying away from spoilers. I've been plugging my ears up when everyone's been talking about it. I understand people love it, and I want to know what the hype is about. And so tonight is the night that I watch Jacob Elordi and Barry Keoghan, I guess, have a romantic, rich people relationship. And then I also want to sketch some portraits. I've been really enjoying doing adult portraits recently. I started last year with some experimental portraits of Emma Stone in Poor Things. I'm yet to see Poor Things, by the way. And I enjoyed the process of this so much because it was something so different to what I normally create that I then went and did another one for the Royal Tannenbaums. And this was very well received. People seem to really be clicking with it. And so I think it's high time that we did some portraiture again. I'm gonna draw portraits, I wanna watch salt burn, I wanna eat prawn crackers. It's gonna be a cracking evening, ladies and gentlemen. And yeah, that is, uh, that is the plan for this evening. I'm gonna go do the boring bits off camera uh, because once again, I'm so sorry to say this and repeat myself, but I can't show you, such is the way of publishing. By the way, tell me in the comment section, do you enjoy these long stretches of just pure drawing segments? Because I noticed in my January video and in this video, there's like long stretches of sketching, inking, coloring. I love watching other creators draw and so i like those segments personally but the people who are in our little tiny community what do you enjoy watching what draws you in the most in a video and i will try and do more of said thing uh let's recoup later and i will update you on more stuff bye well that can't be good oh. Hello, it's me again. Um, I thought I might show you a little bit of drawing progress. These are the portraits that I ended up with while watching Saltburn. As you can tell, I went for the blob exercise, which is basically when you put a bunch of blobs on a page and then you try to make them into either objects or faces or whatever you feel like drawing really. I will say I love this exercise. I didn't anticipate drawing things that were this far out of my comfort zone. I'm really happy with all of these faces. I had to redraw this one a couple of times because I was ending up with a very disproportionate chin and I couldn't quite figure out the proportions and the sizing of the features but this actually ended up being one of my favorite faces. I think this exercise is amazing for practice. My art in general is very kid-centric. It's focused on kid features and children in magical universes and so 
it's very rare that I get to exercise the part of my brain that deals with the adult side of things. So this is what we came up with on the portraiture side. I also sketched this. This is more along the lines of what I normally draw, which is very call arts type of characters. I'm gonna try to clean up this sketch a little bit and then tomorrow I'll focus on getting both of these into tip-top shape. Salt burn was amazing. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Honestly, no notes. That movie was just amazing, precious, gorgeous. Probably one of the better films that I've seen in a while, so I definitely recommend um, checking it out if you haven't already. Cool. I will see you guys um, soon. I'll go work on this and then Here's more stuff for you. How much is the tablespoon? How much is the tablespoon? Pour yes. a cocktail? <laughs> Two ounces of vodka. Pour half the bottle in there. Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons? Two teaspoons. That's a lot of fucking baking powder. To make eight pancakes, it's one egg, but I want to make 16 pancakes. Mm -hmm. So there are two eggs. Okay, a little flour. Alright, alright, slow down. Whoa, that's pretty. It says to, to obviously mix it together, but not over mix it. Gentle taps. Yeah, the first one is a sacrificial one. Ooh. 
This is what the pancakes look thus far. Still cooking some successfully, which is an improvement on the first pancake, which was burnt. Is it crispy in your mouth? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you can flip it. Ooh. I married wow. them while flipping them in union. <laughs> I'll try one. I'll taste this one. Yeah. Baking pancakes, making baking pancakes. Take some bacon and I'll put it in a pancake. Wow. What an unflattering angle. Hello, welcome. It is now the next day. I don't know what my hair is doing. Let's not talk about it. I don't think I'm ready to address what's going on up here. But what we should talk about is this. Let me just get rid of my address. Don't look at this. I was watching a video the other day that heavily featured fountain pens. This still has my address on it. I'm just gonna turn it around. And I thought that looked really fun and also really cool. I haven't dabbled in fountain pens too much. I've only got one, which was a gift from years ago. And I love it, but I would love to explore pens even more. And so I got stuff. Don't look at my nails. Just don't say anything, okay? So I got this fountain pen. It's by a company called Ferris Wheel Press, who I think are based out of Canada. And they do this incredible packaging. I'm not gonna lie, I saw the packaging and I, I knew I was gonna buy this. Like, I'm such a shallow person. Having said how beautiful it is, I am about to tear this packaging to shreds. It's facing me, you can't tell, you can't see, okay. Is that meant to happen? Are we hearing this? How do you, so what, how does this, I should have researched this before I started recording, but much like the rest of my existence, I just continuously think that I can do stuff without any type of prep. Okay, well, we'll come back to the pen. Yo, it's Valentine's Day currently. Don't look at my nails. God dang it. They sent me Valentine's stuff. I think that's really cute. And then I got this, which is of course ink for the pen. Look at this packaging. Look at how beautiful this is, how iridescent. And it is, okay, I can't get it out. This, I'm out of form today with my unboxings and openings. There is just, I. there's so much going on. Can you tell it's shimmery and sparkly and gorgeous? I'm obsessed with this. I literally just want a shelf of inks that look like potion bottles. Over here! It has to be one of these. Lions? Tigers? Bears? Oh my. Looking for this? Whoever came up with this, you're in my brain. You know what's happening. I'm gonna go figure this out and then we'll test it. We'll test it together, but I need to get to the bottom of the clickiness because no. Immediately no. I'm back with the pen again. Um, I figured out what was going on here through some really basic YouTubing and Googling. And it turns out this just, you gotta click it into place. You can't really hear it, I guess. And then this is a piston fill, which means that you turn it in order to get the ink in. Okay, okay. You know, I just, I don't wanna spill this everywhere because we're not done paying for this sofa. It's on finance. Oh, there she goes. You dip the nib in this part. The anatomy of a pen. For the love of God, please focus on the pen. Does it? Does the whole thing need to be in? I don't. Oh shit! We did it! We did it! We did it! We have. Oh, you can't even see. Okay, well, the stuff in there—that's ink. Also, I don't know if you can tell, but I just filled up the pen. You just saw me do that. A full fill of this pen has taken up pretty much no ink. Okay, now it's not gonna focus on my face when I need it to. Of course, of course. Okay, I wanna go test this out on a notebook. So let's do that. Okay, I don't know if you can tell exactly, but this was just written with the fountain pen and in ink. This is what I normally use. It's the Unipin Fine Line. Great pen, um, writes really smooth. This, you can tell, like right here, it just refused to release ink and it sort of just scratched the page out. It doesn't bleed through uh, more than any other pen. Maybe much like a cast iron skillet, we just need to like use this guy and with the use of it, it'll just continuously get better. I'm gonna go write some more, see what happens. Maybe I just have the wrong expectations from a fountain pen, but my Coeco Sport has just been so good to me. This doesn't quite match up to what I'm used to. I'm gonna go write a bit more and see what happens.
Hello everybody, welcome to VoiceOver Maggie, and today we're going on an impromptu trip to Wales um, with an outfit brought to you by the incredible Instagram community, uh, which thank you to everybody who voted for an outfit. This was one of the funniest things I've done online recently. Um, it was such good fun to read everybody's logic on outfit picking, and I've seen a couple of other creators do it. If you have a chance to do this type of thing, please go for it. It's honestly so fun. Um, anyway, our incredible friends, Callum and Shireen wanted to go to a beautiful sandy beach in Wales in a place called Porth Cal. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. God knows I don't pronounce half my stuff right. Um, and they asked us if we wanted to join them for a beautiful day outside. And as two people who cannot drive but also love road trips, we said yes, a billion percent yes, of course. We will quite literally ride in the trunk of your car to go on this trip with you. Um, so we set off early in the morning, went to have a beautiful fish and chips lunch by the seaside. Um, if you've never had the chance to try um, Irish curry, by the way, uh, this is your sign from the universe to go and have it anywhere you can. Because the love that that sauce made with my mouth was revolutionary. Uh, then we went to do some thrift shopping because we're just such suckers for used stuff. And then we set off to the beach, finally. After 13 years in the United Kingdom, this was my first time seeing a sandy beach and it was a beautiful day for it. Our friends immediately went for a dip. It was absolutely freezing, by the way, so kudos to both of you. Um, but the sounds of the wind and the crashing waves and more than anything, really, dogs running after sticks uh, just provided the perfect ambience to explore the coast of Wales. It was, considering the fact that these are some of our last weeks in the Midlands before we move up to Scotland, this was honestly a trip for the books. It meant a lot to both me and Jack, and we can't wait to do a bunch more of these before we head on up. Releases endorphins because you get the endorphin rush, but I think with a tattoo, with it's more of an adrenaline rush. Your body is reacting the same way. You have pain. While some tattoos are for looks and some are for the pain, others have more meaning. This one marks a big moment in Zach's life: the day he will retire from the chili community. It's not an easy decision, but it's become necessary, as his super hot obsession has strained his marriage. I've been through addiction with you, rehab with you, your divorce, and I think the addiction of social media and spicy has been the, the worst. hardest one. Yeah, because I lose you, to, and everyone else gets you. So, I mean, that's been the hardest thing, I think, in our entire seven years of being together. The support kind of stopped for me, Anna. Not completely, but definitely diminished a lot. Instead of bringing me spicy stuff home, it was, you know, I don't want you to do this spicy thing today. I want you to hang out with me. Because I have a lot of things going on in my life, and I finally need to say, hey, I need a little bit of support, too. Yeah, yeah, I and totally get really that. And that's really hard for me to say, because I don't like to take that away from you, but I uh, need it right now, for sure. Yeah. 